PeteTools.com. G'day guys, Pete from Pete's Tools, another great day here in Paradise. Hey, uh, I want to say thanks to all you guys for putting the comments in the comment section down below and asking questions and all sorts of stuff. Question I get quite often, guys, is can you run a plasma cutter on a small compressor? Well, I've only got a small compressor, and I struggle at times, but I'll show you guys what I do, and you might get a few tips and tricks out of it, or you might have a better idea yourself and, and drop it in the comments down below. You might better teach me how to do it properly. Anyway, guys, same as usual. If you like my videos, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Don't forget to come say good day at peachtools.com, and we'll get into this, eh? So before I show you what a small compressor can actually cut with your plasma cutter, guys, I'll just run you around my compressor and I'll just give you an idea of what I call small. And this is not actually a small compressor. This is a small compressor for a plasma cutter, but it's uh, a large compressor for my workshop because I only have single phase power and this is the biggest one I could get. Mine is a Miller's Falls like this and it's got three compressor heads, one, two, three compressor heads like that. And I think that just speeds up the amount that it can compress in the tank in the shortest amount of time, you know what I mean? And it also depends what the displacement is on each head, I would imagine. So uh, if you had a big compressor head, then obviously you don't need two or, three, two or three of them. But I don't know if it's just a style or a cooling thing or whatever it is, but this one has three compressor heads. And it has a um, three horsepower single phase motor here. Like I say, that's the biggest I can get in my workshop. But the problem that I have with this it's not the fact that the pump isn't big enough, it's the fact that the storage tank isn't big enough. I suggest if you're going to get something, get something with a bigger storage tank. I might put another storage tank on this on another video, guys. I'll have to check out if I can get an old compressor at the dump or something that I can steal the tank off and we'll do that. But anyway, that's for a later video. Anyway, guys, I'll just quickly show you the other side of it and then we'll get into the video properly. So this is just the pulley end of it, guys. It's got a double pulley on there because there's quite a bit of torque when you're turning this thing. Um, here, I'll show you the double pulley. So see that guys, we've got a double pulley here, so this is not actually a small compressor, but it's small for me if you understand what I'm saying. And uh, we've got double belts so that we don't slip when the uh, motor tries to start it when it's under load. So my old compressor guys has still got the tag on it, uh, you might be able to read it hopefully anyway. So mine is 3 horsepower, 2.2 kilowatt, the displacement is 456 litres per minute. The tank capacity is 50 litres, or 13 gallons, and mine was manufactured in 2010, the ninth month. Gee, I didn't realise I had it that long, that's what you get when you get old, you start losing your memory. <laughs> but anyway, and this, guys, is too small. Mind you, having said that, I've been plasma cutting with it for obviously nine odd years, almost ten years, and it's still going, it hasn't crept out yet, so what does that tell you? So guys, I normally have this set about 100 pound here, so it's roughly about 100 pound, but I'm cutting like 3 mil up to 4 mil, 5 mil plate. But if you're cutting real thin stuff, you don't need to have that much sort of pressure. So what I'll do guys, is I'll back this right down, and if we're only cutting really thin stuff, we should only need about half the amount of pressure, which should make the volume in the tank last a bit longer. Alright, so we'll just back them off a bit guys. Here we go. So if we back them down to, let's say what? 50 pound, which is about half of what I had. So guys, we've backed it down to about 50, so that was half of what I've had originally. So we'll go and try and cut some thin plate, and I'll show you how it goes. So like I say, that should make the volume in the tank last twice as long. So what I've been cutting for years, guys, is like 3 mil plate, which is this thick, as you can see it here. And that takes a little bit of air. It's not so much the pressure of the air, it's the volume of the air you need, especially if you're doing long cuts. The longer, you, the, longer the cut that you're doing, the more volume of air you're going to need because obviously that you're going to be cutting for a longer amount of time so you need that air to keep continuously flowing through if you're doing short cuts then you haven't got so much of a problem but long cuts mind you having said that short cuts with really thick metal you're going to need a lot of air as well so anyway so this is like i said this is what i normally cut three mil so we'll have a go with those air settings that i've set we'll cut this one mil sheet here so we'll go on from three mil to one mil and then uh, we'll see how that cuts so guys, we'll give this a crack, eh? We'll try and cut that. So I'll just put my magnetic ruler on it. Hey, if you guys want to make one of these rulers, check out the top there. I'll put a link. Pretty awesome tool. It's probably the best tool I've ever made, actually. But anyway, make one yourself. Doesn't cost bugger all to make them. Anyway, we'll try and cut this. And remember, guys, this is at 50 pound. You can even hear on it that it hasn't got so much air going through it, guys. Normally on my case, you can hear the air blasting through it. But this is cutting no problem at all, 50 pounds. A little bit smoky, blowing all the paint off. Woohoo! 
See that guy? Pretty good cut. Running at 50 pounds. The compressor didn't have to restart or anything. Mind you, it's only a short cut. But you'd probably almost get, I reckon you'd almost get a full sheet before my compressor had to start again if you're cutting this thin and metal. Anyway, now let's try and do the same thing at 50 pounds. About the same distance that we're going to cut, but I'll do it on 3 mil and you watch the difference. So guys, here's our one mil. We've got exactly the same width on three mil underneath it. So now we'll whack off the three mil at uh, 50 psi, and I'll show you the difference. All right, guys, let's give this a crack. As you can see, it's pretty horrible. Not even cutting properly. It's more burning at the driver than cutting it. I have to go that bloody slow, but if I go any faster, you watch, it's just, see that? Fast like that, it just doesn't cut. Nowhere near as good as cutting the one mil. I just finished this guy, this is just ugly. Not to mention what we're doing now is burning out the tip of our plasma cutter. We haven't got enough air going through it, it's not cooling it, and it's not pushing the plasma through quick enough. See that guys, that is just absolutely horrible. See how ugly that was guys? I'll see if I can snap it off with a pair of pliers and I'll show you guys. See it's not even cutting through it. And that's only 3mm plate. And that's at the same air setting as what we had the 1mm plate. And it's probably shot the tip at the end as well. See that? See that didn't even cut that guys, that just burnt through it. And that was because we don't have the air pressure. We don't have the volume of air going through the machine. So guys, we'll go from 50 up to 100, which is the maximum my girl will do. So here we go. Now guys, just under 100 PSI there. Right guys, same piece of steel, 100 PSI. So I'm using the same tip as well guys, the tip that we buggered when we were too low pressure before. So I'll just show you the difference. And this is the difference even with a buggered tip. And it just shows you how much the air pressure makes a difference. Cut a little bit faster as well, and this tip on this is buggered. See so the difference, guys? Absolutely humongous difference. And this, the tip on this is shot because we we buggered it when we did it the last time in the last cut. So that just shows you the difference. Issue that I'm having, even with the, my size compressor, is that if I do any longer cut than that, because I have to run it at 100 psi, then the volume in the tank is not enough, and what it does is that it will restart halfway through the cut. As soon as it restarts halfway through the cut, then all my fuses blow in the garage, they all trip out, because it can't handle the load of the plasma cutter and the compressor at the same time. So what I have to do, as soon as I hear the compressor kick in, I have to stop plasma cutting until the compressor kicks out again, and then continue on my cut. Here, I'll show you what it's like. So what we do now guys, instead of cutting crossways like this, we're going to go long ways because we're twice the distance long as what we are across. So if you just look at that roughly there, you see that there. So if we put it down here, see we're one and a bit distance the distance. So with me cutting from the top there to there, I bet you my compressor will restart halfway through the cut because it takes that much air out of the system. Anyway, let's have a go. Hey guys, remember if you want to check out some other cool stuff, come send me at peakstools.com, eh? Right guys, we'll cut the sheet long ways now and I'll just give you fellas a demo. So if we do that. Now, if you watch the lights real closely, when the compressor restarts halfway through a cut, you should see the lights dim, that's how much it's dragging out of my system. Anyway guys, we'll see what happens, eh? Listen out for the compressor restarting.
Yeah. That was quite a good cut too guys, see, don't worry, they're also running at 100 psi. Now if I was cutting any thicker than this, or I went for any longer than this, when that compressor restarted it will blow all my circuit breakers out, it just does it, it's a pain in the neck. Especially if you're cutting 4 or 5 millimeter plate, it just doesn't like it at all. So uh, my issue is, and I think a lot of you guys' issues is going to be as well, it's not so much your compressor head, it's just the storage. If you can get a bigger storage tank on your compressor, it will just give you a longer ability to be able to cut before your compressor cuts in again, that's all. Unless you might have three-phase power or something in your workshop, but I'm not fortunate enough to have that, guys. So if you want to cut something as thick as this, guys, you're going to need at least 100 PSI, and you're going to have to have it for quite a, a length of time, depending on what length you want to cut, of course. Like this, I'd probably get away with it, with my compressor without restarting, but it wouldn't cut much more than that at this thickness because it just won't handle it. Um, it just don't have the reserves of air. Anyway guys, we'll whack through this at 100 psi and I'll show you. Right, get into it. Let's cut that bit off there. We'll see how we go guys. 100 psi. And a note guys, I haven't adjusted the amps on the plasma cutter at all. I've just run it continuously at 40 amp. That's what I'm doing. There you go, blew the whole lot out of the garage. See that guys, the circuit just blew for the plasma cutter and the compressor, it just can't handle both at the same time, it just don't have enough power. And that's because I'm dragging so much air out of the compressor, it just can't handle it. So like I said, maybe if I've got a bigger storage tank, and you guys may have exactly the same problem, um, the bigger the storage tank, the less your compressor has to restart all the time. So guys, hope that answers some of your questions for what it was worth. I'm getting a lot of emails and comments and that from you fellas wanting to know what's the minimum size compressor you can have for your plasma cutter. So I thought I'd just do this little video and, and that's just what I've found anyway. So I reckon you can get away with a smaller compressor as long as you've got a bigger storage tank that it doesn't have to cut in and cut out so often. But if you have three phase power in your workshop, then good luck to you because you can get the biggest compressor that you want, eh? Like I say, I'm stuck to three horsepower and I'm only running 50 litres, which is about 13 gallons, I think. But um, I would go like for 20 gallon storage at least because you're going to have to have the bigger storage. Mind you, if you're only cutting thin metal and you're cutting little strips, you shouldn't be too bad. But the longer you're cutting, the thicker you're cutting, you're going to have to have some more air supply, that's all. Anyway guys, that's enough waffle from Pete today. Catch you next time. Don't forget to come see me at peachtools.com. Drop a comment down below. Click me a like. Do whatever you like. See you later guys. Bye. Peachtools.com Oh, oh, oh.